Hi, Paula Jo from Cedar Quilts with a quick tip Tuesday. So my friend Darlene told me that our friend Sherry found an old quilt inside another quilt. People used to sometimes use old quilts as the batting when they would wear out. And Sherry wanted to know, is it worth keeping or should I just throw it away? Okay, do you know me? I was a lifeguard, I was a Sunday school teacher, I was a dental hygienist for three decades. I like to save things, okay? Come look at this quilt, it is darling. It is so cute, it is so old, it's been stitched over because it had another cover over it. It is falling apart, there are holes and rips and pieces totally missing, and then one, one end, both ends actually, all the points were cut off and everything, but look at how darling it is. Of course we have to save it. So I have promised myself I'm not going to do any more hand repair of vintage quilts because it just takes me way too long. I'm too putsy with all the details, which makes it really gorgeous in the end, but um, I'm going to charge you an arm and leg and I'm going to starve to death if I do that anymore. So I'm not doing that, but on this vintage quilt that my friend Sherry found inside as batting in another quilt, um, we're going to fix this. We're going to save it. And so I want to show you a couple of things about how we're going to do this. Come over here and look at this gorgeous quilt. So this poor quilt had been loved and used and worn out. It's a velveteen rabbit. You know I love velveteen rabbits. But you can see the fabric is just so worn and a lot of it is totally missing and a lot of it is ripped and, and there's spots all over. It would not be worth the time to try to remove the broken pieces and fill them back in with other ones and whatnot. It just, it would take way too long. Um, and you'd have old and new fabrics and that just wouldn't work. You could use this as a pattern and make a replica with some new fabrics. That would be well worth it. Um, but I think this is well worth saving. And so mainly I want to stabilize it so that it's still functional. I mean, it's cute as can be even just as a tablecloth, just the way it is, but you'd never be able to wash it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put a new backing on it, just some cotton white, it's a wide back, so it's 108 inches long by 108 inches wide, and it's gonna be wonderful. I don't need any batting per se, because this already is three layers of a quilt already. There's a backing, there's a little very, very light um, cotton flannel in the inside as a batting, and then the top. So it already has enough weight. We're just going to lay it on top there, and we're gonna quilt with the machine, and uh, reinforce it, it's gonna be wonderful. So first of all, we're just going to see if you can hear me a whole lot better. I think this will be much easier without all the background noise. It's hot here, baby. we got fans going. Hopefully I don't melt. Okay, so one of the things we have to decide on is what thread to use. Obviously, it's a white background. We're going to use white thread, right? And it's white on the back, so we're going to use white, right? But there are lots of shades of white. So I have an 80-10 and an 80-20 here. This one's a clear white. This one's just a slightly dirty white. And then I've got several colors of cream, too. Um, but I think that the slightly dirty white looks much better on that than the white does. But I think I'll use the white white on the back. So I'll do the clear white on the back and the muddier white on the top, and it'll look great. But I'm kind of thinking, depending on if I do everything all at once or if I stabilize all the Dresden fans, Dresden plates first, I kind of like this lightest cream on the colored ones rather than the white. So I might switch back and forth between the two colors, but I haven't decided for sure. I like options. So one of the challenges on this quilt is that a lot of these points were cut off. These are Dresden plates, these Dresden fans, uh, where it makes a circle, kind of like a daisy, and then you can either round them or point them on the ends, and they're just really cute. And then they also did it on the borders, and even the corners. This corner almost looks like a, like a Barbie doll dress. It's just so cute. But one side, and then the opposite side, had been worn so badly, they actually just trimmed it off. They trimmed off all the points when they used it as a batting inside another old quilt. 
but they saved them on the opposite two ends. So what I told Sherry that I think we could do, a couple of different options here. You know me, I like options. So one option, we could stitch this down and she could go around and she could add her bias binding and keep all those points that way. Or I could add just a little bit of batting, just wide enough for the border. And this isn't actually quite as wide as I need, but it's good, good enough for just the example. And I actually, I think I'll use my white batting instead of my creamy batting. And then we'll lay that on there and I will stitch on this and we'll keep all those points and she can still put a binding on the edge. So I need to make sure that I've got uh, almost an inch, at least a half inch, maybe an inch there. So she's got room to put her binding on there as well. But I think this is really going to be the best option. So I have to make sure that I measure from the border out to where I want the fold because I want about an inch, maybe slightly less than an inch here so that she can add her binding. And so I'm going to want about a six inch piece of batting and then fold this backing on here so that when I put the quilt on there and pin it the first time, we've got that nice little edge. And if I have a little too much out here, that's fine because we can always trim that. If I'm too close, then you can't trim. I like options. I like keeping the options open. So we'll probably go at least six inches, maybe slightly more, and then she can trim it down a little bit more if she wants. But I think that's going to work really well. And then I had some technical difficulties from here on out. So we're going to be using some still pictures, some photos from before and after I had done any machine quilting on this this vintage quilt. But as you can see in this first picture, I, I pinned it all on and again you can see a lot of the the damage of some of the the fabrics. And from underneath you can see the new sheet um, is going to give it some strength. I don't want to be changing the the look of the vintage quilt very much. I mainly want to stabilize it. So I do a lot of um, wiggle ditch stitching. It, it's sort of like a zigzag, but um, a little softer, not quite as um, uniform as a regular zigzag. But anyway, um, I stitch things down and then I, I have to do some little curly cues here and there to hold down the the ripped fabrics, but um, I like this little Barbie doll dress in the corner. Um, I love the details there, and and uh, I think it looks very pretty from the back side. Um, again, there there were a number of areas where there had been some hand quilting done. I I hate to um, take away from that, but you can see the the new stitching that I did. Um, um, follows what was there very nicely but gives it a little more a little more strength a little more definition but overall it, it has the same appearance here again you can see a much larger portion of the of the quilt and the before and then afterwards especially looking through it with the sunshine you can see some of the little holes um, in the actual quilt itself not just the the applique fabrics but the the quilt itself had some rips and so every once in a while I had to do a little extra a little extra stitching you can see a little uh, flower on this one but then again there were some areas that had a lot of damage in not only the applique fabrics but the the top portion the white portion of the quilt and so along those edges that were really tattered and torn um, I just did a lot of background fill. I, I just kept white on white so that it isn't terribly noticeable if you're from a distance. But up close, there's a lot of pretty little fun textures and things in there. But overall, it really still has that vintage look. We've retained those points on the, the two edges. And um, I gave Sherry some options as I talked in the beginning about how she could do the binding. And I, I encouraged her to at least save the, the Barbie doll dress points in and out on the corners. But she was going to go uh, probably with the straight edges on the sides there. But anyway, it's a beautiful vintage quilt and oh, so worth saving and using and enjoying. So, thanks for coming by. Come back and see me again. Toodaloo.